Wow, guys, I never thought I would see MSNBC calling out Nancy Pelosi, a Democrat. Now, MSNBC, they typically lean a little bit to the left, maybe a lot of bit to the left. Well, uh, former President Donald Trump has the worst job record loss of any president, is what Nancy Pelosi claimed. Well, MSNBC, Katie Turr, she straight up shut Nancy Pelosi down on this one. And this is this is this is a first, guys, uh, with the economy consistently important to potential 2024 voters. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi of California, Democrat of, of California, compared the job creation records of President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump during a recent interview with MSNBC's Katie Turr. It just took one interview of former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to shoot President Biden right in the foot. It's normal for both parties to try and pin the blame on the other. Democrats would try to pin the blame with the economy and the border crisis on Republicans. Meanwhile, Republicans will probably go back and say that Bidenomics and an open border policy is to blame. However, it's a little bit more difficult for the White House to deflect the blame given that our president is a Democrat. Now, the same goes for the Senate majority. Now, what's surprising, though, is that MSNBC, a primarily left-leaning news outlet, left Nancy Pelosi speechless. Look at what happened when Nancy Pelosi is faced with a logical and truthful answer. And just for context, they're talking about the job situation that we all went through during the health crisis just a few years ago. Plus, they also discuss how billions of dollars recently just got passed for foreign aid. But there are those who have real legitimate concerns about immigration, uh, globalization, innovation, and what does that mean for their job and their family's future? And we have to address those concerns. And Joe Biden is doing that, created nine million jobs in his term in office. Donald Trump as the worst record of job loss of any president. So we just have to make sure people know. That was a global so, pandemic. He had the worst record of any president. We've had other concerns in our country. If you want to be an apologist for Donald Trump, that, that may be your role. Can you believe that, guys? She literally shut Nancy Pelosi down. Nancy Pelosi was like, uh, uh, uh. I wasn't expecting you to like, you know, interject and disagree with my lie. You're supposed to just go along with it. What are you what are you doing? You're breaking the script. But it ain't mine. And I he don't has think the worst. That anybody can accuse and, me and of that. we no, but let me just say, as a speaker of the house, we put forth a three trillion dollar bill. Three trillion dollars of, of investment in communities and the rest. And that is stimulates the economy. I just want to ask well. one more question. This one's on Speaker Mike Johnson. Um, there's talk about a motion to vacate. If there is one, would you vote to, to help him save his seat? I will take save his speakership. From, I'll take my lead from Hakeem Jeffries, our great leader. He was so masterful in how he did what he had to do in order for us to get this vote uh, for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan all the elements of that legislation. So he's our leader and he will make a determination. So Pelosi embodies the idea of repeating the same argument, but just louder because that makes you right, doesn't it? So long as you can talk over the voices of other people. It's also amazing that this journalist was dubbed as a Trump apologist for literally saying the truth. For all we know, she might not even like Trump, but because she talked about the truth that clashed with Pelosi and the Democrats narrative, she automatically became an apologist. That's just crazy, isn't it? And when it comes to Speaker Mike Johnson, experts are already predicting what will happen next. So Democrats will swoop in to help save his job because they're getting exactly what they want from him. Some have even gone so far as to call him a yes man to Democrats because he gave way to the $95 billion legislation for foreign aid. Meanwhile, we have veterans who are homeless right now here at home. We have people here on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, who have to pay back thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Social Security Administration because of mistakes that the administration committed. And I just want to kind of highlight this entire idea of President Biden's creating all these jobs. What they're taking credit for is the fact that jobs slowly returned after the health crisis. These were not jobs that were created as they want us to think. They existed before the pandemic. They were all lost during the pandemic and were recovered after it. The White House has even tried to push back on the truth. In the recent White House Correspondents Dinner, President Joe Biden talked about how eight people have already played him as a character on SNL. He then asks, who keeps saying that he's not a job? Creator. Lauren's a great friend who's had eight comedians play me over the years on Saturday Night Live. Eight. And who the hell says I'm not a real job creator?
The facts state that employment under the previous administration was positive up until the economy lost more than 20 million jobs back in April 2020, which is again within the pandemic years. Pelosi and the White House want us to think that it was Trump that lost all these jobs, not a health crisis that shut the entire country and the world down that seems to happen every century or so. Critics of the former speaker says that she loves to try to always pin the blame on the former president. And the same goes for President Biden when he talks about Trump. He railed against him during the talks of illegal immigration and the border crisis. He says that this is all Trump's fault. However, even voters know what's up. So a Gallup poll shows that 56% of registered voters in the country support rounding up illegal immigrants and deporting them to their home countries. Now, I know it sounds a little bit extreme. However, there are many who are just kind of fed up with how the federal government has treated this situation. Tonight, new fallout from the crisis at the southern border. It's prompting some Democratic lawmakers to call on President Biden to do more and a change of heart from many Americans on how to respond. Here's national correspondent Christine Frazau. Those on the front lines warn it's a literal embodiment of the challenges we face as a country. A freight train carrying hundreds of migrants now speeding toward the U.S. border as local law enforcement struggles to keep up. This is my 40th year working the border in one aspect or another. And I, I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly of this border. And this is the ugliest I've ever seen it. Cochise County, Arizona Sheriff Mark Daniels' concerns echoing through the halls of Congress 2,000 miles away, where five moderate Democrats are calling on President Biden to give the Border Patrol the same authority to immediately expel migrants that expired, lamenting along with the president, the foreign aid package just signed into law did not include provisions for the border. This year I proposed and negotiated and agreed to the strongest border security bill this country has ever, ever, ever seen. It was bipartisan. It should have been included in this bill. Former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan just back from the border in McAllen, Texas, begging Congress as a whole to stop ignoring the crisis. The Republican candidate for Senate writing in the Washington Times, this is a national security threat that leaders in both parties have failed to take seriously. And what's more, a whopping 69% of the voters said that President Biden should use his existing power to stop illegal immigration, a move that he once discussed but never acted upon. Now, just to refresh you guys' memory here, back in 2019 and due to a campaign promise from Mexican President Andres Manuel well, Lopez Obrador, illegal immigrants are allowed by Mexico to enter the United States. Now, this caused a spike in people coming into our country back then. Trump, who was the president at the time, threatened Lopez Obrador with tariffs until he agreed to take migrants who claimed asylum and keep them in Mexico until their cases were adjudicated. This effectively lowered the number of people that were crossing through our borders. Now, the question is, will President Biden do something similar? Because he hasn't talked about the border since they passed this $95 billion in foreign aid bill. Now, another person who doesn't appreciate how many people have come in through our borders is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. So Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump, they threw verbal jabs at each other until the governor gave way to Donald Trump as the Republican nominee for president. And now, things seem to be a lot better between the two. In a post on True Social, Donald Trump celebrated what he called as a great meeting with DeSantis. I never thought I would actually read those words. He says that the governor expressed full and enthusiastic support of Trump's bid for the White House. The former president also confirmed that they talked about how they can work together as well as the future of Florida. He then added that he appreciated DeSantis' support and that they're going to take the country back from the worst president in our history. So here's the thing with this meeting. Some analysts believe that there was a soft opening for Trump calling in his running mate, meaning that there's a chance that we could possibly see Donald Trump and DeSantis go head to head against Biden and Harris. Experts say that pairing the former president with the Florida governor would more than overwhelm the Democrats this coming November. But what do you guys think? Now, as always, I'm going to continue to bring you guys the facts, the updates, and I just want to thank you all so much for hitting the like button for these videos. Thank you for sharing them on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you on the next one.